Good afternoon. Thank you to everybody for joining us today. My name is Sunny Summers. I'm the Cannabis Policy Coordinator for the Oregon Department of Agriculture. I'm going to have with me today Emily Roke and Arden Gwynn. Um, what we're going to do today is do probably a pretty short and sweet overview of um, filling out your 2020 Oh, I put 2021, didn't I? 2022 hemp applications. Not ready for the new year, I guess. Um, I think we're going to have plenty of time, so let's hold any questions until the end of the presentation. Um, I ask that everybody keep their, their phone or computer muted, and if you don't do that, I have uh, the ability to do that for you, and so I will help you out with that. Um, with that, uh, also, we are recording this meeting so that we can put it on our website for others who weren't able to make it today. So with that, I'm going to turn the time over to Emily and Arden. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Emily Roke. I'm the hemp testing specialist for the Oregon Department of Agriculture. As Sunny mentioned today, we're just going to be going over the 2022 hemp grower growth site um, applications and it, it's going to be pretty informal. It's going to be mainly a step by step. So as she mentioned, if you have any questions, please feel free to, you know, put them in the chat box. Um, and I see Arden sharing a screen now. So this is what a copy of the application looks like if you haven't seen it. Um, and a reminder, please mute. Unmuted. If you're the meeting organizer, press star now. Okay, so I'm going to go um, start off with number one. This is the license. We're now joining the meeting. Um, so this is going to be your business name. A lot of people, um, this kind of confuses them. You don't have to have a business to be registered. You can actually be registered under your individual name. Um, if you are registering under an individual name, just put your name. Um, no need to make up a business name. That does happen from time to time. People feel like they need to put a business name, so they'll spontaneously create one. Um, don't pick, put a fake business either. It needs to be a real business. So that's something we see sometimes. Um, so if you are wanting to register a business, you're going to want to put the complete um, business name and make sure it's spelled correctly. That's something else that we see a lot um, is if you, if there's like a really specific way to spell your business name, say if my business name was Emily's Hemp Farms, um, maybe I have a Z instead of an S on the farms portion. So that's just stuff to keep in mind. Um, make sure it's spelled exactly the way that it is when you registered it with the um, Oregon Secretary of State Business Registry. So just keep that in mind, a couple things for that portion. Um, we do see errors with, with that, so keep that in mind. Um, number two is just your 2021 hemp grower registration number. So obviously this is only if you were registered to grow in 2021, you would put down that IHG number. That's located on your um, registration card itself. So there sometimes there's multiple different numbers, you're going to want to pick the IHG number and write that in. Um, if you weren't registered last year, you can just ignore that question. And then number three, this um, this does trip some people up sometimes. I think it's a little bit confusing myself, the legal status of the licensee. So what this means is basically if you are registering yourself and you're not registering a business, you would click individual like Arden has there. Um, so keep that in mind. If you're in that no business category, you're going to click that. If you do have a business, you're going to want to put the um, entity type of that business. So is it a limited liability company? Is it uh, ABN, Inc., um, other sort of business? So you're going to want to fill that in on the side if it's not an LLC, but it's something else. And Next, I'll kind of go over that a little bit more too when, um, if Arden can pull up the Secretary of State's. Yes, so this is a website that we use and I encourage you to use it as well. It's just the um, Secretary of State Business Registration Search. 
So this is going to help you fill out number four. Um, which is your business registration number on the application. So, and you should already have this, it, you know, it should be in your records if you do have a business, um, but in case you don't have it, you can go to this website and look up your information. So what I do is I would type in a business name and Arden and I were, yeah, we were looking up businesses and Pepsi came to mind. So obviously this is a business in Oregon. Um, and there's all these other businesses that have Pepsi in the name of it. So you're going to click your business. Um, you know, for this demonstration, we're, we're choosing Pepsi Bend LLC. So as you can see, um, Arden, if you can move your screen over a little bit. Yes, thank you. Um, it does have the name of the business and it also right above the business has entity type. So if you weren't sure about what entity your business was, this is a way where you can find that out. So um, Arden, if you can click on entity type, this is a list of basically all the different types of, of businesses that are out there. So you can you know, find yours on this list, um, but usually it's chosen um, for you on that web page. So if you can go back, I'll go over how to find the registry number. I think it needs to be dragged over a little bit more, at least for what I can see. Oh, the other way. Yeah, okay. Thank you. So if you look in the top left, there's that registry number section. That's what we're referring to for number four. So um, like I said, this should be printed out on your um, business registry. And I don't know, Arden, is there a way for you to zoom in? Yeah, thanks, because um, I'm using a very big monitor, so I can't uh, and I can't see my screen share, so yeah, but, you know, I'll just go like this. How's that? Yeah, that's better. <laughs> so this is what your business registry number looks like. Um, it does look similar to a tax ID number, so sometimes people put that there. Um, so please don't put your tax ID number. Make sure you're putting your business registry number. So like I said, if you have a business registered with the state, you're going to have a number like this, and that's what we're asking for for number four. Yeah, just like that. So um, I think those are the main things we see with with those numbers one through four. And now Arden's going to take it over four, five, and six. Yeah, thank you, Emily. Um, <clears throat> another comment I'll have on the that I see for the business registry is that um, I'll pull it back up and show you that the entity status here has to be active. Um, you have to renew with the Secretary of State. So if it's inactive, I mean, you can click here and see sometimes it's deleted, inactive, unfiled, et cetera. So just make sure that it's an active, um, actively registered business with the state too. Um, okay, so number five is the key participants section. Um, simply put, Key participants are any person that is authorized to make changes to your license. So um, please include any members, officers, owners, um, directors, general partners um, of your business. So essentially it's folks with an, a financial interest or an ownership interest in your business. And we have additional definitions, more specific definitions on our website because some of those definitions, um, some of those definitions have changed for 2022 or we've expanded on them. So if you're interested, we have a whole section right above this um, where you download this application that's, that gives you more details on that. Um, another big change here for 2022 is that every key participant will need a background check and that's a USDA requirement next year and moving forward. Um, so just keep that in mind. And um, what we're looking for for section five is a full name, um, a title, you know, how are they related to your business? Are they the CEO? Are they the manager? Are they um, whatever title that they might have? I can't think of all of them. <laughs> um, and then a valid phone number for that person. Um, we here have four, only four spaces, but you might have more than four people that are key participants for your business. 
So um, print page one, this page out as many times as you need to and just fill out number five as many times as you need to. Um, number six main contact person is related. It's it is also that person is a key participant as well. Um, arguably the most important key participant because that that's the person that we're going to call first. Um, that's the person we're going to call if we need revisions to your application, if we need to make an appointment for a site inspection or anything like that. Um, so put someone you trust here, put someone um, that pays attention to their email, that pays attention to their voicemail, um, especially around the time that you apply, you're going to want to keep up on that correspondence. Um, if something is incorrect or missing on your application, that's the person we will reach out to and um, you will have, this is important to note that you have 15 calendar days from the time we reach out to you for that correction. If you don't get back to us, you're basically back in the end of the line. You have to reapply um, brand new. So make sure you put same as up top in number five, full name, a valid email address, please. Um, and a valid phone number that happens a lot. People have disconnected numbers. We can't get a hold of them. Um, here, the status of the main contact. Again, this is sort of like the title up above. Um, is it the CEO or owner? Um, we have an option here for consultant, but I really advise against using a consultant here um, because typically that person's just a bookkeeper who's doing your paperwork, and we need somebody who is involved in the everyday operation of your bro site. Um, and then um, a mailing address, city, state, and zip code. Back to you, Emily. Thank you. OK, so next we're going to go over number six and or seven and eight, which are the grow site information and production area information sections. And we do see a lot of errors um, in these particular sections. There's just a lot of details, and so it's easy to, to miss something. So starting off, I like to kind of explain what the difference between a grow site and a production area is. Um, so I like to refer to the grow site as basically your overall farm. Uh, so grow sites are by address. So the grow site information section is really for your overall you know property your overall area that you're going to be growing on and your production areas are the individual areas on that property that you're growing in so if you've got five greenhouses at that property then you know the property is the growth site and the five greenhouses are your production areas um so as arden put in uh he put himself a uh, growth site name is arden's farm and that's something like I would I would do something similar, you know, just something easy that you're going to remember as your grow site name. Um, and then obviously we're asking for your address of the grow site. So something that gets missed on this portion a lot is the county. Uh, please be sure to include that. We we you know we do look them up, but it just would go a lot faster if you include everything in it on the first try. Um, so then. Also, I wanted to note this little bullet at the end of the grow site information. Um, it explains that you need to attach a map uh, to the application for it to be complete. So Arden's going to go over our mapping tool um, in a little bit, but basically what this means is that you need to include a map with your grow site outlined and each production area outlined separately. And you need to make sure that your grow site is labeled and your production areas are labeled. That's really important. A lot of people forget to attach one. Um, another thing people do is they will fax in their application and they'll fax in their maps with their application. But sometimes when we get a fax, the maps come out like basically black. And so we have to reach out to you asking for new copies of your maps. So what I like to suggest is, you know, obviously you cannot email an application, um, but you can't email your maps in. So you can fax in your application with your payment and then you can send an email um, to our hemp email with your maps and just like a short explanation like I just submitted my application here's my maps and we can actually attach those to your file. Um, you can also mail your application as well if you want to avoid that issue. So going over production area information 
section. So a couple things about production areas. Um, they need to be contiguous, meaning that they can't have anything, any barrier between them. So when I mentioned if you have five greenhouses, that's five production areas. That's because one greenhouse is a contiguous area. But if you have five greenhouses, it's not one contiguous area because the borders of the greenhouses divide the areas, if that makes sense. I know it's really confusing <laughs> and we can talk with you through your, like your specific situation if you need more guidance on that. Um, but just so you know, greenhouses, hoop houses, they all need to be registered as separate production areas and they also need to be tested um, separately as well. So when you get your pre-harvest testing done, which is a requirement for every grower, um, you'll need to keep that in mind. So as Arden did, he filled out greenhouse one, you're gonna provide an area name similar like you did in the green, in the grow site um, area portion. So you're gonna wanna name the production areas and then you're gonna wanna indicate how large they are. So he checked greenhouse or indoor and he indicated that it's 1200 square feet. Um, something we see with the production areas is folks will sometimes check both um, or they'll put acres and square feet. So if it's a greenhouse, we're really wanting you to um, put how large it is in square feet, not acres. And sometimes we'll reach back out to you because we're not sure if you're meaning it's a greenhouse and a field. So that's why you put acres and square feet or if you just want the extra mile and calculate it out you know, how many acres your greenhouses are. So definitely keep that in mind, um, check one. And then for intended uses, um, you would just check what you're growing for in that particular area. So if in this greenhouse you're growing for flower, you're just gonna click that. Also, we ask um, if you're growing for hemp seed and if you are, whether or not you're growing for self-use or if you're growing for other purposes such as you want to sell seed that you're growing in which case we might reach out to you and make sure that you don't need a, a seed registration to go along with that. Uh, we also have a propagation section so let's say you were propagating your seedling your seeds in your greenhouse but you were planting them in your field you would click propagation self-use for this area in particular. Um, or like if you were a nursery or something, you would do propagation other, like you're going to sell those seedlings. Um, and lastly, I always, it's not lastly, it's second to last, but it looks last to me. Um, how many harvests are planned for this area? So that's important, especially if you're growing for green in greenhouses, you can have uh, multiple harvests in a year. So we're asking for for that information in that se in that section. And lastly, um, for these, it's latitude and longitude coordinates. So these are pretty tricky, um, especially if you're not technologically savvy like me. I'm, I, computers are not my friend. <laughs> so um, they are gonna be in decimal format. And there's an example that Arden just gave. It's gonna look something like this, not decimal degrees, or not degrees, minutes, seconds, but decimal. Um, and you can get that a couple different ways. You can get that on Google Maps. Um, uh, we actually, Arden's gonna go over our mapping tool next and there is a way to get your coordinates from that mapping tool as well. But just um, make sure that they are from the center of each production area or relatively close to that and um, making sure that they're complete and that each separate area has its own unique set of GPS coordinates. It cannot be the same GPS coordinates for each production area. So those are just a couple things. I think um, Arden's ready to take it from here on the mapping tool. Yes, thank you, Emily. So um, there's a couple ways you can get to our mapping tool, and I'm not going to go too deep into it. We have a recorded how-to for the mapping tool. It's a longer one on our website. Um, but right here, this if you hover over, um, the required attachment copy of a map showing boundaries. You can click that and it will take you to this handy dandy mapping tool. Um, you can also use, there's a short link, it's oda.fyi forward slash hemp map tool. It's a quick way to get there. 
Um, and so it will zoom out um, automatically to Oregon, and you're going to want to type in your address here. Can you see it? All right. So I'm going to type in my growth site address. And you can drag it around so you can see the, your entire property outline. Um, and there's a few tools here for drawing. Um, you can play around with this. It's a sandbox. I prefer to use um, this polyline tool. It allows you to anchor on the corners. Um, you can see that this is a satellite view map. Um, so you want to click a color that's going to contrast that. And then you're going to outline each production area, as Emily had mentioned. And I'm going to go ahead and you outline my field here. And um, you can anchor on the corner so that you can change direction and do the best you can on your outline. And then you double click when you're done. And there's my field, but this I also have a greenhouse here that's not shown on satellite view, so I'm going to make sure that I draw that in as well. And then double click to complete that. And um, lastly, I'm going to need an outline of my grow site map. So that's number seven. Um, as Emily mentioned, it's basically your entire farm or your property outline. So for this demonstration, I'm pretending it's this entire block. And double click to complete that. Um, you can also use this tool to find your GPS coordinates, and that will be not in the draw tool. So you can close this out, and this is the measurement tool. So it will allow you to um, find your GPS coordinates. And again, you're going to want to be in degrees. And you can see as I move my cursor, um, it changes the latitude longitude changes as I move, but if I click the middle of my production area to get that GPS coordinate read, then a point shows up here and my cursor keeps moving. And so you can record down that uh, latitude longitude on your field production area and then do the same thing for the center of your greenhouse. Record that on your map or on your application. And um, this tool can also be used if you're not really sure how big your structures are, or how big your field is. You can um, go ahead and use this on the left. There is a area measurement and there's a drop down menu here for acres, square feet. That's what we're asking for. For the outdoor areas, we want the acreage. For the indoor areas, we want the square feet. So similar to how you just outlined your field, you can do the same thing with this measurement. So you just want to click the corners, outlining it the best you can. I would round that up 1.4 acres. You can clear it and do the same thing. Behave. Oh, and I forgot. We want square feet. Behave yourself. Depending on my trackpad is not doing a great job today. I'm going to X out and go back in. How about that? There we go. So then I would record about 5,070 square feet on my greenhouse production area. Now we also are going to want to see labels for your production areas. So back in this draw, draw tool again, um, you're going to go to this text box and I would prefer a contrasting color as well here. So I'm going to use green and um, these labels must correspond with the name that you assign to them on your on your application. So I called it field one and um, you can see as I hover it says click to add the point. Um, if you don't see that, it's because you're in the preview mode and this little icon here must be outlined and then you, it allow you to add the text to your map. So that fits nicely in the field. 
that's very clear to me. Um, and so I'm also going to label my greenhouse as greenhouse one. And preview that. Um, I don't think that'll fit, so I'm just going to put it as close as I can to the structure itself. Greenhouse one, there we go. And last but not least, you're going to want to print this out and attach it. So you hit this little print icon here. It will allow you to give your map a title. So I would prefer if, if it were me filling it out, I would label it with my grow site name or my farm name. So I am calling this Arden's Farm. And it's going to essentially just create a PDF for you. Um, it can get a little wonky depending on how zoomed in you are. So you're going to want to make sure this is about um, center of your screen. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Make sure it encaptures everything and I'm going to hit print. It's not going to print right away. It's going to create a PDF that you can then open in another browser and you can check that everything is is nice and neat on your page here. And if it's not, you can just go back and do it again because it will boom. That looks great. Art and spot. Um, but say that it was too zoomed in. I, you could hit print again and it'll just create a second one for you. It won't erase the first one. So you could mess around with this until you get it how you want it. Uh, so that is the quick and dirty of the hemp mapping tool. And I'm going to move on to the next section. Number nine, which asks if you're storing or drying your own hemp um, at another location. So if I plan to harvest my hemp, but I have another farm with a bigger barn and I'm going to hang dry it in there, I'm going to click yes and I'm going to include that address and we can um, we'll have that in our database so that if we get you know a complaint or a law enforcement request, we know it's associated with your licensed grow site. Um, so make sure you put you know the full street address, the county, state, cities, and all that fun stuff. Um, and number ten is a required section. Do not leave this blank. You will be request. We will request a revision if you do. So here you're going to want to tell us your harvest from 2021. Um, so please include the full amount of acres or square feet that you harvested, as well as the amount in pounds of hemp you harvested. We prefer dry weight if possible. And if you did not grow hemp, you will check this box. And then you can move on to number 11, which asks you basically about your water resource. Um, it's required to have a legal source of water for a commercial crop. So um, we're asking if you which type of uh, water source you're using and um, if you have a water right you can include your permit number here and moving on back to you emily great thank you so next um is just the signature acknowledgement page and you know obviously i'm not i'm not going to go through all these bullets but um i just want to make a uh, note that you should read through all these and understand them and if you have any questions about them please reach out to us um, but definitely take a read through those and um, if you're when you get down to the bottom which Arden if you can scroll down a little bit um, something that often we see is the I wait where you have to print your name we often see that that's left blank and you just rush down to sign it <laughs> um, please print your name so that we know who is signing it um, and please make sure that it is a, a member of the business that can sign it. Um, and then also make sure you date it. And then lastly, I think it's just the payment, the fee portion, which is a little bit confusing. Um, so this is where you basically check what you're paying for. So if you wanted to get just a base grower registration, it's $250. So what that means is a base grower registration allows you to sell and store hemp. It does not allow you to grow hemp. So you need a grower and a grow site to actually grow hemp in 2022. If you, like I said, if you just needed it to sell your leftover hemp from years prior, you would just get that 250 um, one. So if you wanted to do that, you don't need to fill out any of the grow site information or production area information. Um, it's just simply a grow reg a registration that allows you to store and sell that crop. Um, if you're doing a grower grow site, it's 750 total. 
and then each key participant is $75 each. So you're going to want to count up the key participants that you have and times that um, each one by 75. And that's how you'll get your total there. And then um, it, it goes over how to submit your payment um, right, right beneath that. So you can pay by check or money order or by credit card. Um, please make sure to, I think I've mentioned this before, don't email any sensitive payment information. It's really bad idea. Um, we're subject to public records requests. We try to delete them, but um, just keep that in mind. And if you are paying by credit card, you would fill out this information there. And then you mail it to wherever it says to mail it to, and um, you should be good to go after that. So I think now we can open up for questions. I do see some questions in the chat. Um, I have one one last thing I forgot to mention. Um, which in 2022, we have a deadline of May 31st. So make sure that you submit and pay for your application before May 31st. Perfect. I was going to, that was on my, my list. Um, and I, I would just take a step back. Uh, we didn't really kind of talk about all the changes that are happening this year, um, but we will be a farm bill uh, USDA approved state starting January 1st of 2022. So that background check information that you're seeing is a requirement of the 2018 farm bill. Um, part of that is that you will also need to be providing some of this same information to your local farm service agency office. That is a program within USDA and a requirement under the USDA um, rules. And so we will have some information um, up on our website and I just popped into my head. It might be worthy if we can get somebody from FSA to come talk to growers. So look for uh, future opportunities around that. Um, Arden, could you talk a little bit more about key participants? Um, that's part of the, the background check piece and the, the USDA requirements, um, but who we consider a key participant? Yeah, um, maybe I went too quickly about, over that, but um... Yeah, the key participants essentially are folks that are registered with your business or are members or, or even entities um, with financial interest in your business. Um, so as I mentioned before, I mean, we only have four spots here, but you very well could have more than four people that are key participants. Um, is there and we get a lot of a lot of questions about employees do i have to put all of my employees down as a key participant right no no but i do think you know sometimes the main contact person it's good to have you know your farm manager you want someone the main contact person is also a key participant right so um you want someone there who's going to know what's going on on site you know your daily activities you don't want you know again like i mentioned you don't want a consultant there because they don't know what's going on they can't provide the department any information if we reach out to them so um no you don't need you know you don't need your cousin who's like just helping you water you know twice this year or something like that like you don't need every single person but you want people who have like financial interest or are you know, owners of the business in some sense. Awesome. And going back to that consultant's question, can I have my consultant fill out the paperwork and file it, even if I'm not having them be the person who is signing it? I Yeah, I, that's fine. You can have a bookkeeper fill out your paperwork for you, but you, a key participant has to sign it and agree and acknowledge everything that all the requirements of um, having a grower license. Okay, awesome. Um, and then we have another question, and I think it goes to you, Arden. On number 10 on that application, if you're just growing seedlings for other folks um, and you're not harvesting, what would we like to see there? That is a great question. Um, you can indicate that, because um, I don't think that qualifies for did not grow hemp, but you did not grow to maturity. 
Um, so you can let us know, you know, amount of seedlings that you produced for other people here. Um, and I think that we could be able to deduce that. Maybe write in, you know, pr produce seedlings yeah, to yeah. sell to other growers or something. Okay. Um, we didn't talk about the renewal forms and the online payment methods. Is that something that one of you can touch on briefly? I don't, I unfortunately don't know much about that. I'm not sure if anyone else on the call does. I don't know if Emily does, but I'm pretty far removed from that at this point. Yeah, I'd like to pass that along to Sunny or, or Mike, if you guys know anything more. It's, yeah, we've been kind of, I don't know that much about it. <laughs> so, sorry. Mark, you asked that question. Do you have something specific? Um that you're asking when you ask that question? Go ahead and unmute yourself if you like. Um, I'm just concerned that there's something that I'm not aware of. The form seems pretty simple and obvious, but um, I went to the um, payment online site and it was all very new. And I just wanna make sure that there's nothing that uh, isn't obvious. I don't, I don't know how else to say it. It's just, it's just new and I'll make sure I'm not missing something. Totally. Um, so in that case, if and when you get in there and you have questions, feel free to give give the office a call and somebody can work through that with you. Um, and actually our office manager, Annie, may have some additional information. Go ahead, Annie. Thank you. I did wanna just comment on those renewal forms. I do know that if you, on the first page, bottom left, there is a web, address listed there to be able to do it online and that would be where you could upload your attachments and submit your payment i also know that if you log out of the system you are able to log back in and view your answers so you could get your printed out copy to keep for your records uh, i do apologize i don't have a lot more detail than that but i did want to share those bits that I can share with you in the process. If you have further questions, I think please do reach out to our office and we can handle them individually. Thank you, Annie. Um, and that is that is new this year um, to the hemp program. So we appreciate your your patience and grace with us as we too learn that new system. And again, that's for folks who were um, registered previously, now called licenses. Um, so if you are new to the program, you will, and you're like, what are they talking about? It's because you weren't licensed before. And so it's not a renewal and you need to go through this process that um, Emily and Arden described. Any other questions? You can either raise your virtual hand and I can call on you or you can type a question in the chat. Yeah, Mike Godenthal, our hemp program manager, has something he'd like to share. So the one thing I wanted to say was on for these renewals that, that we have out there, yeah, we had a uh, deadline date of 1 December to submit them. However, because we didn't get them on the website until after 1 December for this year only for the 2022 renewal season, um, we will accept those renewals until the 31st of December. So get them in because that allows you then to continue operating under that old license until we get your new license approved. Um, and so work through that and, and try to get those in on time and before they expire on the 1st of January. Thank you, Mike. Can you also talk a little bit about um, how the background check piece might be a little bit slow for us this first year as well? Sure. As you have all experienced with dealing with us and having to go through applications um, like we just provided or just went through, we're doing the th same thing with the Oregon State Police and the FBI. And so we have to get approval from the FBI 
with a registration number from them before we can get into the background check system. And we are patiently waiting that um, with the hopes that it will arrive for Christmas now um, <laughs> because it hasn't arrived yet. Uh, so what we are doing in the meantime, if if you submit a renewal, we accept that we start processing it. Uh, if we need updates, we'll ask you for those updates, um, but we will get your license processed to the point where we can issue it without but and and then hold it until we can get the background check done. Same if it's a new application. If you're a new grower, we will process that application to the point that we can make sure it's complete so that when we get the go ahead to do these background checks, we can get them done and we can get these licenses issued out to you and we're all hopping and ready for the season. Um, so uh, we're practicing the patience that you've practiced with us. Uh, and so, you know, let's hope we get it and we can get you going. Uh, I think our process for doing uh, processing your license applications will be smoother this year and we can get them done in a timely fashion. Um, so if we can get that background check started, we'll be in good shape and, and get going for the season. Thanks, Mike. And and to make sure that everybody's on the same page, that background check applies for all growers who are going to be licensed by ODA. So it doesn't matter if you're a new license um, or a renewal, any grower who is growing hemp must, um, and the key participants for that grower must go through this background check process per the USDA rules. And that background check does not apply to the hemp handler license. This is another reason why uh, that main contact person really needs to be somebody who um, answers their phone or checks their voicemail or answers their uh, emails, as Arden mentioned earlier, because we will be reaching back out to do the background check piece once we have that process finalized with the feds. And again, um, I don't know if we mentioned it, but just to be clear, Sending your money to ODA does not mean that you are legal to grow hemp. You must receive your actual license from ODA in order to legally operate. So if you don't respond to those emails with questions um, or respond to the emails about the background check process and you start growing hemp, you could be found um, in violation, not just of administrative law, which ODA administers, but criminal law as well. So make sure that you keep that in mind uh, moving forward. Okay, so as we said, we are gonna make this available on the website. It'll probably take a, a week or so to get up. Um, so if you have friends who were not able to make it today and they want to, to run through it, We'll have that available. Um, we're happy to take your phone calls and emails and appreciate your patience as we work through this yet again new process. Um, and we wish everybody a wonderful um, holiday season and hope that you're able to have time with your friends and family. And we really appreciate you joining us today. And yes, as Mike Odenthal said, let us know what topics would be really helpful for us to provide similar webinars and or meetings about. And with that, I'm gonna stop the recording and appreciate your time. <laughs>